My nose looks really weird today. Is it just me? I feel like that highlight was just a bad idea today. Hey guys, it's Megan, and if you're new to my channel, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you can become a member of this awkward little internet family. I know that's a lot of trust to put in, just assuming that my content is going to be entertaining or good in any sense, but just, just trust me, subscribe. And if you're already subscribed and haven't turned on notifications, you should hit that little bell down below next to the subscription button so you can get notified every time I upload a new video, which is consistently on Mondays and Fridays at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I've done a really good job at consistently uploading on my upload days and I'm proud of myself for it because this is the first time in like forever I've been consistent with anything in my life, so yes. So, I'm gonna give you a spoiler warning. If you have not yet finished watching all of Stranger Things seasons one and two, you should probably click out of this video and stop watching. But this video goes up in December and Stranger Things came out like mid to late October. So like, it's been a few months, so or like a couple months at least. So I feel like I can talk about my opinions on the show now and not feel bad about it because I feel like it doesn't take that long to watch nine episodes on Netflix. I watched all of them within the span of two days. I could have watched them all in one day, but the, one of the days I was busy doing other things, being an adult and stuff. But yeah, I've, I've seen all the episodes of season two, and I, I even rewatched season one within a day just to like catch myself up. So I have notes here on my opinions on what the writers chose to do with the show. So I'm gonna talk about both seasons one and two because I really like the show. It was so freaking good. And I feel like I just wanna talk about my opinions because because people care about my opinion, right? <laughs> just again, let me repeat, there will be spoilers in this video. So if you don't want the seasons that you haven't watched or I mean, there's only two seasons. So like if you haven't watched any of it and you don't wanna get spoiled, then just, just leave. I'm sorry, I love you, bye. Come back when you're done watching Stranger Things. I'm like, I'm, I'm actually drinking a monster right now. I tried to record this makeup tutorial, but I accidentally did my left eye first, which is my eye that I use for recording. So I just decided whatever, I'm just gonna like do my makeup and it's not gonna be the look I planned on doing, but whatever. And I got two hours of sleep last night because I finished a project at like midnight and then couldn't fall asleep. So I was up until like 6 a.m. just laying in my bed staring at the ceiling and then I finally got two hours of sleep and now I'm drinking a monster. So I'm gonna start off with the things that happened in season one and how I feel about them. I thought that the actress who played Eleven did an amazing job at portraying a, uh, sir, could you not? Anyways, I thought that the actress who played um, Eleven did an amazing job at portraying a character who had spent her entire life in a lab setting. And it was great because like, I didn't even know that she was British before the end of season two. So like, she's good at playing an American actor or an American character, so that was good. I would say that I'm really impressed with how the show was able to make me so emotionally connected to Joyce because like, I actually cried the second time watching it through a lot. Just seeing Joyce breaking down because everybody was calling her crazy and I already knew that she wasn't crazy and it was just really sad and I felt really bad and I just wanted to like, give her a hug. Plus Winona Ryder is amazing. I was just so impressed with how they made her such a lovable character and I just, I had this emotional connection to her, I guess, because I have anxiety issues and I could relate to her in a sense, but also not really because like she was a little bit dealing with, you know, the whole upside down thing and I don't deal with that. I just have anxiety. I also thought that the cinematics were just really, really great and like they did a really amazing job at making it feel like a mystery in every single episode. Obviously the creators of the show are very talented and know exactly what they're doing because like the whole time I was watching the show, I was distracted from like the real world and I felt like I was just like actually in this, just seeing it through the eyes of somebody watching it happen. 
So that was really, really cool and I was excited about that. So like I get that Jonathan is into photography and all that, but I still don't really understand why he decided to take a bunch of pictures of Nancy while she was, you know, taking off her clothes. Like I get that he was looking for his brother, but I really, really don't get why he knew that he was taking pictures of her while she was taking her clothes off. I just don't understand why he continued to take pictures. Like obviously it was to show that Barb went missing and dis disappeared into the pool, but like I, I just really don't understand why he's portrayed to be such a good character when he still did take a bunch of pictures of a girl taking off her clothes. But anyways, I, I do love Jonathan, but I don't think that Nancy should have forgiven him as quickly as she did for taking those pictures because it's still really disturbing that he took those. Like, I'd be uncomfortable if I was, like, changing and somebody took a bunch of pictures of me. Throughout season one, I really, really liked the character development of um, Nancy and Hopper because they both at the beginning seemed like they didn't really believe what was going on or they seemed a little bit pretentious. Like Hopper was more like the laid back cop who really didn't care. But then he realized that like, wait a minute, this is kind of messed up. I think at the point when they found Will's fake body was when Hopper was like snapped into reality. I just, I like how Nancy showed her distress dress from Barb going missing and took things seriously instead of just like pretending that nothing happened. I guess this might be kind of an unpopular opinion. I'm not really sure what other people's stances on this are, but I don't really like how they made Mike out to be such a hero in the show. Like he's just another kid and they made it seem like his friends were like, they made Dustin seem dumb and they made Lucas seem like a jerk. And I really wish they didn't do that because it made Mike out to seem like he was this perfect character with no flaws and I didn't like that and like the only real thing about him was just that he was looking for Will and he had a crush on Eleven. I don't know, I just, I felt like Mike was too good to be true and his friends were made out to be like not good enough. Like obviously everybody would care if their friend went missing and they made it seem like Dustin and Lucas didn't really care as much as Mike did. And I also hate how oblivious Mike's parents were but I understand why they did that because it did give the show a little bit of a comedic aspect because I mean if every parent was like as into it as Joyce was then everything would have been resolved very quickly but and also I guess Eleven did say no parents so um, I still don't think Barb deserved to die, and I still don't think she got justice in season two. I really, really don't. I actually cried a lot when they found Will's body, or his fake body, and I really hate how much of a jerk they made Lu Lucas turn into when the body was found, or after the body was found, and like, Mike yelled at Eleven, but like, I get why that happened, I just, I wish it didn't happen, because it made me really sad, because we all knew that, or we didn't really know for sure yet, but we had an idea that Will wasn't really dead, so like, I just, it was frustrating that they all got so angry and cold about it, but that's also how people get, I guess. I also really love Steve. He's a great character. Like, I know it took him a little longer to develop. Like, it basically took him until uh, the end of season one to become a really lovable character, but he did turn into a lovable character, and I appreciate that because he's great. And I know that everybody thinks that Jonathan is, like, more attractive than Steve, but I really don't understand why. Maybe it's just my little sister. I think just my little sister thinks that because that, come on, Steve's attractive. Overall, I really, really like how season one ended. It ended on such a cliffhanger with Hopper putting the egos in the little box in the woods. Like that, that cliffhanger was just like, yes. But they also didn't really explain at the end why Hopper got in that uh, car with the people from the lab. I didn't really understand that at the end, but, and I don't think they ever really explained what that was. And my refrigerator decided it's going to start contributing to the video. So in season two, I really don't like how they made it seem like Callie was gonna be such a big character and as such a huge part of the season when she was really only in two episodes. We didn't even like really understand her story or I didn't really understand um, much about her until like Eleven's temper tantrum episode where she just like runs off and does her own thing and she's only in one episode. So like I feel like they could have made the story a little bit better with 
Callie, but oh well. I don't, I don't even think that it was really necessary for Callie to be um, introduced, but I don't hate it. It was just more like, okay, there, there's obviously more. So like there was eight and I'm gonna assume that nine and 10 ended up getting killed in the lab and that's why they were never noticed or they weren't seen in the rainbow room because if it goes by age, then 9 and 10 would have been slightly older than 11 and slightly younger than Kali, but Kali and 11 were found in the rainbow room together. So I'm assuming that 9 and 10 probably died in some sort of experiment, but I'm not gonna be very happy about it if the show decides to start introducing like one, two, three, four, just all these little kids with superpowers or whatever, because that's gonna be annoying. And also I share that opinion with um, Jenna Marbles. She has this podcast that I watch and they discuss Stranger Things and they were talking about how they were really hoping that that doesn't happen and I also really hope that doesn't happen because then it'll just turn into a like cluster, um, I'm not gonna say that word, uh, just like this mess of a se of a show that so many shows turn into. And I just, I don't wanna see that happen with the show because it's so early right now, they don't need to start introducing a ton of different test subjects. <laughs> I really, really loved the father-daughter relationship that Hopper and Eleven developed. It made me so happy. And at the beginning when I realized that Hopper was the one who like took in Eleven, it just made my heart feel so good because like his daughter died and now he's taking in Eleven and Eleven has no idea that he even had a daughter and it's just like so sweet and I love it. But I really, really hated that it took the entire season for Eleven to be reunited with Mike. That was so frustrating and I wish they didn't do that because like, it's so like typical, I guess, because they knew it would make people want to keep watching to see that when the reunite, when the reunion happened. I absolutely hated Mike's attitude towards Max. I thought he was so rude and that he was so unaccepting and I don't care that he's like a middle school boy. He was being rude, like so rude. She just wanted to have friends and she was at this new school where she knew nobody and her older brother's a douchebag and all these these boys are trying to be friends with her except for Mike and Mike is like the alpha or whatever of this group and he's the one who's like no she's not part of our um I can't remember what they called it it wasn't a squad something member oh my god it's gonna drive me crazy if I can't remember I'm so upset I can't remember what it's called they call their group something and I can't remember whatever I'll, I'll think about it later but that's really upsetting and it's gonna drive me insane if I can't figure it out I absolutely hated Max's brother and I'm gonna be really pissed off if in the next season they make him a lovable character as well um like Steve was their get out of jail free card you only get one you can't make a bunch of unlikable characters and then turn them likable it's just annoying when you do that we need a character who just kind of generally sucks and um yeah uh the, Max's brother is definitely a character that generally just sucks. I thought that Dustin was a little shit for keeping Dart and lying to his friends about it especially when he knew that thing came from the upside down and everything from the upside down so far had been a bad thing like no you can't say 11 because she only opened the gate she's not from the upside down so like i was so pissed off at dustin for keeping dart when he knew very well that that thing was going to do something stupid or something bad or something dangerous and guess what it ate his cat and I felt so bad for his mom because I have cats. I have four of them at home and I love them to death. And if I had this like whatever it was called, um, Demogorgon, if I had something eat my cat, I would be so upset and I would probably die of just sadness. And Dustin didn't care at all that his cat died. He said, sorry, I have to do this. You ate my cat. Like, really? I was just so upset about that. It, it really, really upset me and really disturbed me to see. Actually, when I saw that they introduced a cat to the show, I thought, oh great, they're gonna kill that cat in this season. And they did. And I knew it was gonna happen when um, Dustin's mom was looking for the cat, like with the treats or whatever. And I was like, oh no, oh no, the cat's dead. And I was really sad because I love cats so much. But I really also appreciate that Will wasn't just completely fine in season two. Like he obviously went through hell in season one. The upside down was hell for him. He almost died. And like, I really appreciate 
appreciate that they gave him some sort of PTSD type thing, which turned into supernatural um, connection to the Upside Down, but like, I do think that like, he still should probably have some sort of PTSD even in season three, because like, that's traumatizing. And he's still like 12, I think, 12 or 13. They're about to be freshmen in high school in the next season, I believe. So like, he's obviously scarred. And I think that they did a really good job at like showing the audience like, hey, you can't just go through something like that and then just be okay at the end. And something that my dad said about the show was that they did an amazing job at portraying um, what it was like for a middle schooler in the 80s because that's how old my dad was during the 80s. So like he said that it was basically spot on from what he experienced. So I guess that's cool. I thought Nancy did a really good job at showing her mental breakdown about Barb not getting justice and about seeing Barb's parents still trying to find her thinking that she's alive. I think that maybe Nancy shouldn't be drinking anymore uh, because she kind of obviously can't handle herself on alcohol, but that's not like an issue with the show. That was actually a really comedic part of the show that I enjoyed. But like, I'm really glad that the show didn't just like pretend that Barb never happened. But like Steve, um, he's super lovable, but he's stupid and he really shouldn't be giving Dustin any relationship advice because he himself doesn't have the best relationship luck. So yeah, but I really love Steven this season. He was a lo super lovable guy. He wasn't really problematic except for the fact that he didn't really want to tell Barb's parents the truth and Nancy ended up doing that stuff with Steve, or not Steve, Steve's who I'm talking about, um, with Jonathan. But yeah, in season two, Mike's parents are obviously still super oblivious. I really can't remember what Max's brother's name is, but like when he was flirting with Mike's mom, that was so gross and uncomfortable because like, ugh. But like also, I really don't like Mike's dad because he's just like, he doesn't listen and he doesn't pay attention and Mike's mom obviously cares about existing a little bit more or whatever. Um, they obviously have a rocky relationship. That wasn't really touched on in season one, but like other than Nancy saying like, I don't think my parents have ever been in love. That didn't really show at all in season one, but in season two, they really did show that Nancy's parents weren't really that very fond of each other. So I thought that that was a really um, smart thing that the shoe, the, the shoe, that the show did that I appreciate. And I also really liked the introduction of Lucas's sister. I think she's hilarious, especially when Dustin was like freaking out cause he realized he messed up and he was like saying code red and all that. And she was like, I get it, code red or something along the lines of code, shut up. That was really funny. I thought that she was super sassy and a great addition to the show. I also really appreciated Eleven's um, psychic temper tantrum. I thought that that was amazing and I loved it, even though I got really annoyed with her because she was being a little shit too. I really feel bad if my parents are watching this because they're probably not used to me saying that as much, but like, I've also, I'm 19. I'm allowed to say what I want. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, Eleven, you're being a brat. But also I knew that Eleven had never really had a father figure before that didn't, you know, stick needles in her and put probes on her and make her a test subject. So like she wasn't used to rules. So like I understand why she threw such a vicious temper tantrum, but like I feel like she could have trusted Hopper not to like be a shitty dad, but whatever. Eleven has her own issues and it makes sense that she has these issues. I just feel like she was just being a bratty little kid who didn't really understand the context of what was happening. I also really, really love how they used Dig Dug in the first episode to kind of foreshadow the tunnels under the pumpkin patch thing. I don't know, like I wouldn't have made the connection on my own before watching the um, Beyond Stranger Things thing on uh, Netflix after Stranger Things season two, um, but they even noted that they did that on purpose, that Dig Dug was a foreshadowing to the tunnels, which is a really, really smart thing. I just wish I'd been smart enough to catch on to what that was, but that was cool in my opinion. And like I said before about Barb, I really don't think Bob needed to die and I totally blame Joyce because Joyce didn't need to wait in the lobby for him knowing that there were like these death monsters down in the lobby, like ready to kill him, ready to even kill her. I don't understand why she waited in there. Like he would 
have lived if she had waited outside because he would have gone outside to go greet her. But like they did their stupid little lovey-dovey moment or whatever and then he died. And that was really annoying because I feel like they didn't need to kill Bob. But also actually when that uh, doctor or whatever was like directing Bob through the place, I really thought that he was actually going to be like malicious and end up trying to get Bob killed so that way he didn't have to come up with a reason for Bob to like keep his mouth shut about the situation. But like luckily the doctor was actually not a super bad guy and didn't lead Bob to his death. It was um, Joyce's fault. I was really upset that none of the girls at the dance at the end wanted to dance with um, Dustin but I feel like that was karma because again he was a little shit for keeping Dart, but then Nancy was super sweet and danced with him, so I thought that that was a really, really smart thing for them to add to the show, because like then all the girls were like, why is she dancing with him? But like, at the same time, I still think Nancy didn't need to be so sweet to him, because still, I'm really upset with Dustin, and hope that in season three, they give him like some sort of consequence for it. Maybe make Dustin get stuck in the upside down, whatever. I really, I don't want Dustin to get stuck in the upside down, but I feel like something bad needs to happen to Dustin because of what he did with like keeping Dart and like you know his cat getting murdered so yeah I just I have like such bitter feelings towards Dustin. I'm actually also really happy that the show like gave Eleven's backstory and like her mom's backstory too because like that I feel like was like looked over in the first season and I'm really glad that they touched on that but I wish they'd touched on it a little bit more but I don't know what how much more they could have actually done. But I thought that it was really great that they tied that in and didn't just like leave it in season one and it was just like not gonna be talked about again. But yeah. So those are my opinions on like the things that happened in Stranger Things 1 and 2. I really thoroughly enjoyed the show and I really hope they come out with a season 3 and just continue making the show because it's one of those shows that you just get hooked on so freaking fast and it just keeps you thinking and makes you wonder and gives you those conspiracy theory type thoughts, which are not the best thoughts to have, but like, they're not the worst thoughts to have. If you want to know like what happens behind the scenes of my videos or just my life in general, you should look at the little thingies I have on the screen right there. Isn't that cool? I have a little thing that goes over the video that says my social media handles and yeah, you should, uh, there's people in the hallway and I wonder if they hear me talking to myself. Anyways, um, you should find me on these social media platforms and add me and follow me and DM me and all that because I try to respond because I don't get a bunch of notifications because I don't have that big of a following. So like, be interactive, say hi, tell me what you like about my videos, what you hate about my videos, I want your input. But yeah. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and if you haven't already subscribed, you should subscribe by hitting that button down below. I actually just hit 120 subscribers, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave it a big thumbs up because it helps me with my motivation issues and makes me want to make more content for you and lets me know what kind of videos you actually enjoy seeing on my channel. I love you, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.